Hello and welcome back to my channel, or if you're new here for the very first time, welcome. I'm so happy you're here. My name's Hannah. I post a lot of content about anti-MLM. I'll link my massive anti-MLM playlist right here. This has 180 videos on it. This is the 180th. I have a few different series on my channel, but today's video is part of the Horror Stories series, and I'm bringing you Horror Stories 72. Every time I sit down to film one of these videos, I'm sort of in disbelief that there are this many stories that I have enough content to make 72 videos out of it. I I still have 1200 unread horror story emails in my inbox at this very moment. Let me do the math on that really quick. Okay, hold on. I have about five stories per video. So if I were to read all of them, that would be enough stories for 240 more videos. <laughs> it's mind boggling. I can't believe that this many people have personal experiences with multi-level marketing companies and they are bad enough that they're like, hey, I have a horror story for you. Something shocking and tragic happened to me and I'm gonna write to you about it. Oh my goodness, it's a really good problem to have for the sake of this channel, for the sake of these videos. I have so much content to make videos out of right now. On one hand, I'm not happy to hear that there are that many negative experiences that are warranting this many emails, but also, like I said, it's a great problem to have and I'm so appreciative for the people who have sent in their story to me. And last little note before we get into it, if you have your own horror story that you would like to send in and have considered for a video, the instructions for how to send that my way are in the description box below. It's very easy. You just send me an email. That's all I've got for you as far as intro stuff, so let's get right into the stories today. This one says, Hi Hannah, I love your channel, and after watching every single one of your horror story videos, I finally decided to submit my own. Wow, that is dedication. Thank you for being here. I've abbreviated people's names, so you're welcome to read this as is. I wouldn't say that I grew up anti-MLM, although I think I always saw MLMs as rather silly. When I was young, my mom used to host Pampered Chef parties for her friend who was a rep, although she stopped once people expressed to her that they only came to be polite and they were uncomfortable having to buy products every time. I went to a few Mary Kay parties in high school just to support friends of mine. I have a funny story about a Mary Kay lady showing up to my house after I stopped responding to her texts. Maybe I'll submit that another time. But overall, I didn't have too many negative experiences. My horror story takes place after I graduated college in my first post-grad job. One of my coworkers at my job was a rep for doTERRA and several of my coworkers bought essential oils from her. One specific co worker, we'll call her Jay, bought a lot of essential oils and was a huge proponent of them. She sincerely believed that different oils could help illnesses, injuries, and even mental health issues. Due to some chronic family health issues I witnessed growing up, I have a lot of anxiety around doctors and typically avoid going if at all possible. While working at this job, I got a sinus infection but kept telling myself it was just a cold and I didn't go to the doctor. As a result, I was sick for almost two months straight. On one specific day, I must have looked miserable because my coworker Jay asked me if I was okay. I broke down and I told her that I had been sick with a cold for a long time and I wasn't getting any better. Her face lit up. I have something that can help you, she said. She proceeded to explain to me that anytime she felt a cold coming on, she would take an empty pill capsule and fill them with essential oils. I can't remember all the ones she used, but I remember lemon, tea tree, peppermint, and eucalyptus were some of them. She offered to make me a magic pill and I felt awkward refusing, so I accepted. I watched her open an empty pill capsule and fill it with drops of various essential oils that she pulled from her purse. I guess she carried them with her. She handed me a pill and a glass of water and she took a pill herself to quote, protect her immune system from my germs. I felt nervous taking the pill, but I was a not yet recovered people pleaser. So I thought, what's the worst that can happen? And down the hatch it went. Surprise surprise, surprise, my cold symptoms did not improve at all throughout the day, and I had the added joy of a queasy stomach and minty lemon burps. Jay offered me another pill at one point, and I discreetly took it to the bathroom and flushed it down the toilet. She made up a few more pills for me to take home and instructed me to keep taking them until my symptoms disappeared. I thanked her with no intention of taking any more of the pills. Thankfully, by the time I got home after work and rested, my stomach issues got better and I sort of forgot about the entire incident. That is, until I was woken up around midnight to my phone ringing. It was Jay. I was confused but answered, worried that something was wrong. Did you take any more of those pills I gave you? She asked nervously. I told her I hadn't and she sighed in relief. I'm so sorry, she said. Please don't take any more of them. Apparently, she had taken several more pills once she returned home because she wanted to make sure that she didn't catch my illness. After about an hour, she started feeling very sick. Her boyfriend asked her 
if she was okay because she started throwing up. She told him how she had probably taken too many pills. He was like, pills? What pills? His eyes widened when she explained to him and he exclaimed, you're not supposed to ingest essential oils. You're probably poisoned. He was so concerned that he ended up calling poison control and they advised Jay to go to a doctor to make sure she was okay since she had ingested so many undiluted oils. She then told me how she felt upset because poison control told her that essential oils are quote, only good to make things smell nice but they do not help illnesses and should never be ingested. She said that was annoying because, quote, obviously essential oils do help illnesses. I just took too many. I didn't argue with her, but I did find this amusing. Long story short, I ended up finally visiting a doctor, found out that I had a sinus infection, which is why I wasn't getting any better. And after a few days of antibiotics, I felt like a new woman. Moral of the story, don't swallow essential oils and definitely go to the doctor if you've had a cold that won't go away. Thanks for taking the time to read my story and congratulations on your baby girl. What a fantastic moral to your story. Please God, don't eat essential oils. And if you're sick, go to a doctor, especially if it's something that won't go away. I understand staying home for a few days if you have the cold or the flu or whatever, see if it'll pass. But if you are sick for two months, it's probably something that needs medical attention and it's most definitely not something essential oils can fix. I think that this quote from the person on the poison control line is pretty entertaining saying, you know what? These things are really only good for sniffing. They're good for aromatherapy. They are not good for ingesting and they really don't do anything for your health. That's something I've been preaching in my videos for a long time now is that past the point of smelling nice, essential oils are not proven to do anything for you. And that in some cases, according to your story, they can do way more harm than good. This girl's popping essential oil pills all day and look at what happened to her. She ended up throwing up all night. Sounds like it didn't do a great job preventing you from getting sick, now did it? This particular coworker that we're talking about here, it doesn't sound like she was in doTERRA herself. It sounds like she was just a customer, somebody who is heavily bought into these product claims and spends a lot of her money on oils. And that is unfortunate, but I do have to respect her for giving you a call, even if it was in the middle of the night, to warn you saying, please don't take any more. I'm sorry. I made a poor recommendation. You should not be taking these. Good on her for doing that. Even though it doesn't sound like she fully gets it, it sounds like she still thinks ingesting oils is fine if you do it in the right quantities, which yeah, I guess that is true. A couple drops here and there, it's not going to kill you. It's not going to make you throw up and call poison control. But also, what's the point? Because it's not proven to do anything. So how about we just don't do it at all? That's my stance on it, obviously, but it doesn't sound like she's come around to that realization yet. Anyway, thank you for sending this one in. Thank goodness you didn't take all of those pills. And your story definitely makes for a very entertaining cautionary tale. This story says, hi, Hannah, please keep this message anonymous as this story relates directly to my profession. I'm an American living in Europe and I've been working in the fitness industry for about eight years now. I have multiple certifications in personal training, group classes, and most notably two evidence-based nutrition courses. One of these courses requires 150 hours of one-on-one -on -one training with a registered dietitian and included the same textbooks that clinical dietitians receive in the United States. I have the credentials to provide people with an evidence-based weight loss plan, including a workout plan, a calorie goal, macro nutrient goal, etc. As a trainer, I help my clients who have a desire to lose body fat make small, sustainable, and manageable lifestyle changes to achieve their goal. I do not provide meal plans as I consider this highly unethical for a personal trainer to do, most notably because they do not take into account people's culture, foods or eating schedule, personal preferences, and taste. In comes an international client one day looking for a personal trainer, and of course, as the token American, this girl gets recommended to me. Everything went great in our consultation. We tested her body fat level, we took before photos, we did a little sample workout, and I tested her fitness level. She had about 30 to 45 pounds to lose and her strength level was that of a beginner. At the time, she kept saying that she had to lose 30 pounds in roughly eight to nine weeks. As a five foot two woman, that was simply not going to happen. She was insistent that she wanted to get on a meal plan and that she didn't want to eat more than 500 calories a day and that she would water fast several days a week. Despite my efforts to describe to her why that would not only be physically impossible to sustain for eight weeks, but also counterintuitive to her goal, she was insistent that she had to try. She would be healthy because she was getting all the vitamins and minerals
minerals she needed. It was very clear to me based on our conversations that she had absolutely no knowledge about nutrition whatsoever. I didn't think this was odd as many people lack the fundamental understanding of calorie balance, but something just felt off at the time. For the first two weeks, I spoke to her daily about the fact that I would not provide her a meal plan, but that we could work out together. I recommended she eat about 1600 calories and train three times a week and that she should absolutely eat enough calories to recover from training and that I wanted to help her, but that I would not support such dangerous tactics to get there. Two weeks in and it was time for our first weigh in. Unfortunately, she did not shed any body fat based on measurements and her weight. She broke out in tears about how she quote has to do it and would train with a trainer five times a week if necessary. I asked her what the rush was, why she was being so hard on herself, what could possibly require her to lose that much weight so quickly. She went quiet and said nothing. She was a customer of a corporate gym and had purchased clips of personal training before our consultation, but I was itching to drop her as a client when her one month prepaid clips were out. Daily, she messaged me, called me, and harassed me about what new fad she could implement to lose weight. A week later, I saw an ad on Facebook Marketplace for a women's wellness retreat. I thought it was suspicious because in this European country, such a thing is almost unheard of. As an American, super familiar with Beachbody and Herbalife and other MLMs which take advantage of people in the wellness industry, I had to see what this was about. When I clicked on this retreat, I found photos of four separate women, scantily clad in bikinis, posing while drinking water and being surrounded by fruit. The description read something along the lines of energetically renewing oneself and manifesting a life of abundance with special guest speakers, including the nutritionist X. And the name listed was the girl that you have been personally training. I sat there shocked for quite some time. My client who had absolutely no knowledge of nutrition whatsoever had hired me specifically because she needed help to lose fat, who was insistent on doing extremely dangerous starvation diets was calling herself a nutritionist. I did some digging on all of those involved. Not only was this retreat selling Kongan water, but this girl was quite high up in the ranks of Juice Plus. I found her Instagram where she was seen smiling and taking pills and talking about how all of her vitamin and mineral needs are met because she was taking the ultimate supplement. How healthy she was, how easy it was, how you too can take control of your health. I was horrified to think that she firstly felt the need to maintain some sort of image in order to be financially successful, but I was even more horrified to know that this girl literally made her living by scamming people at these fake women's wellness retreats as she posed to be something she clearly is not. I could just see her 30 to 45 pounds down because she starved herself and trained with a personal trainer five times a week as she lied to these women, victims, about how Juice Plus had given her the body and health of her dreams. Our next session, she came in and I directed asked her about this. Are you in Juice Plus? Yes. How did you know? I hold wellness retreats four times a year. Her excitement rang through. Isn't Juice Plus an MLM? I said, yeah. And are you a nutritionist? Her face began to sour. Well, I'm a consultant and I've been taking the products for years. I was even able to retire my husband. She began defensively. I'm sorry. I don't think this can work. I'm going to go contact corporate so that we can refund you for your remaining week of personal training. She sat there for a moment in disbelief before shrugging and gathering her things. I had to contact corporate and beg them to end her prepaid clips and refund her for a week of personal training. I had to explain to at least three different people why I could not work with her. I even got an official warning from my boss because I quote, could have at least trained her until she finished her clips, but trying to explain to my boss what an MLM was, how she was dangerously dieting, how training her would directly interfere with my ethical obligation as a person personal trainer, etc., was futile. It was a sword I was willing to fall on though. This is just a cautionary tale about fake wellness retreats, the cult mentality of MLMs, and especially those which target weight loss. Be careful out there. You never know what kind of crazy people are at these things. And worse, what these scammers will likely put themselves through to pretend they are this pinnacle of health. 
My goodness. Well, 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 we're pulling the curtain back on this one, aren't we? It's painfully clear exactly what she was trying to do here. She has this deadline. She has a wellness retreat coming up. She wants to look her best, obviously, if she's promoting herself as a nutritionist at a wellness retreat, but we'll never admit that Juice Plus doesn't actually work and you need to starve yourself and work with a personal trainer to lose that weight. Man, it's really sad. It's sad when you think about it more than anything. Thing. What an immense amount of pressure to put on yourself to look a certain way or to be a certain way, all for the approval of others and all so that you can sell Juice Plus and be the poster child for the fact that it works, even though it doesn't and you're still doing incredibly unhealthy things to your body to make it look a certain way, to be able to sell the product or to be able to present yourself as a nutritionist or somebody who is the pinnacle of health. That's heartbreaking when you really break it down. Down. But I love that your story really exposes that and it shows us the lengths that some people are willing to go behind the scenes to portray a false image of themselves, to be somebody that they're not, all in the name of deceiving people so that you can make some money off of them. Really messed up, but also really sad. This one says, hi, Hannah, I've recently found your channel and I've really been enjoying binging your content. Thank you. When I found your MLM horror stories, I knew I had to write in. My horror story is from a completely different angle than most as it comes from inside the corporate side of an MLM. Yes, I love it. Give me the inside scoop. Quite a few years ago, I was in college at Arizona State University and working towards my bachelor's in marketing. I loved it. Part of my degree required that I participate in a part-time internship over the course of a semester. I found what appeared to be the perfect internship. The office was close to campus, they paid pretty well, which was more than could be said about most of the internships, and it was a social media position, something that I was interested in. So the company was a health and wellness company that sold supplements and focused primarily on gut health. Can you guess where this is going? I was hired for an internship position at the headquarters of none other than Plexus. I know what you're thinking, but I genuinely had no idea Idea what Plexus was, and I thought MLMs were strictly Monate and doTERRA and Young Living, and even then, I didn't know what I know now about how shady these businesses are. I signed all the HR paperwork, and it took about three hours into my first day to realize what company I had actually just got involved in. Safe to say I've come a long way since college me, and would definitely look into a company more before taking a job with them. I felt so icky about what this company was that I legit considered quitting, but I felt trapped because my professor had already signed off on this internship and I needed to earn those three credits for the semester. It was way too late in the semester to try and find a new internship that would qualify. I figured I would do it for three months and then get out. They gave me some products as a welcome gift, including a water bottle and approximately 5,328 packets of Slim, aka the pink drink. I tried it and I did not like the taste of it, nor did I believe the two million things it claimed to do for my body. So on on week two, when my boss asked me why I wasn't drinking my daily pink drink like everyone in the office did all day long, I legit went to Walmart and bought raspberry crystal light packets and started drinking those in the office to make it look like I was drinking my Slim. I still laugh about that to this day. Genius move. I support it. I could go on and on about all the weird cult culture, but I'll just say this. When you sit in on several company marketing meetings a week, you start to learn really quickly who their target market is. And I can tell you it is 100% their own ambassadors. I was there for three months and went through like four new product launches. So on brand for an MLM. And I can tell you they released these to create hype for their current ambassadors and bank on them purchasing these products. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for confirming that. That is something we speculate a lot about on this channel is that the primary customer of these schemes are the reps who get involved with it. It's kind of like a closed system. <laughs> the people within the pyramid, those who have signed up for the business opportunity are typically the ones that purchase the most product. They are the ones that the company sells to the most. There is very infrequently outside customers. That's because with MLMs, there's all kinds of sales volume quotas that you have to hit every
every single month to stay active and hit and maintain ranks. And oftentimes you can hit those quotas with your own personal purchases. So if you're not selling enough that month to hit your quotas, you can just purchase some for yourself to hit the quotas. It's so easy to spend more money in MLMs than you're making. And yeah, typically the people who are buying MLM products are those who are in the MLM themselves. And I am eating this up right now that you have that corporate perspective on this, that their target market is their own ambassadors and that they intentionally release products to be sold to those people. They're constantly writing a fine line with compliance claims and everyone at headquarters would talk openly about how their ambassadors would always make ridiculous non-compliant claims and they just kind of winked and smiled about it. So gross. It was so sad to see how truly obsessed these ambassadors were with this company. They would hang on to every word we posted on social media and literally cry if headquarters recognized them or reposted anything of theirs. You could tell it was an unhealthy dynamic from a million miles away. It made me genuinely sad to witness. Anyway, there are so many more things I could say, but I'll keep it short. No, don't keep it short. Tell me everything. (laughs) If you have more tea, please send it in a second email, okay? This is gold. I got out of there the second my internship ended and I have avoided all MLM since at all costs. I will say most of my coworkers were good, friendly, and professionally very talented people. And unlike 98% of people associated with Plexus, at least I got financially compensated for my time. However, it's been years and years and I still feel guilty about the time I spent perpetuating the MLM industry. Thanks again for your videos. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant. I love it. What a great story, seriously. I love these unique perspectives so much. To have somebody who interned at Plexus Corporate come here and validate all of the things that we've been saying, it's priceless. Thank you for this firsthand account. I really appreciate writing in your story. This story says, hi Hannah, not sure if you'll see this, but I've just discovered your YouTube channel and I'm loving your anti MLM content, but particularly your Monate related videos. The reason for this is because I've fairly recently gotten sucked into becoming a Monate customer by a family member. If you choose to read my story, I would like to please remain anonymous. This family member approached me about it with a hey hun message, of course, when I was 38 weeks pregnant, claiming that the shampoo she was selling was so good for postpartum hair loss. The way she explained it to me was absolutely not transparent at all, and I was led to believe that I was just purchasing a one-off bottle of shampoo and conditioner to try. I initially told her that I would maybe be interested a little while after having my baby once things had settled down. She waited one month and then slid back into my DMs asking me about it again. She made me do a hair survey and then from that concluded that I needed a bunch of products, which added to quite a large cost. She insisted this would help my hair and help with postpartum hair loss. I was a little annoyed that it was so expensive, but whatever. Again, I thought this was a once off. I used the shampoo and conditioner when it came and honestly, it made my hair feel quite crappy and waxy and it never improved either. Literally, Pantene shampoo from the supermarket makes my hair feel nicer than Monate did. A month later, I received an email from Monate telling me that I had a flex ship order ready. I wasn't really sure what that was as she did not explain it initially, but soon enough, Monate took money out of my account and sent me another hair oil. I literally hadn't even opened the first one I got. Ah yes, the Rejuvenique oil. This is Monate's most popular product, I believe. That's the way it comes off at least. Monate market partners pitch this thing like it's God's gift to the earth, that it's the best hair product you will ever try. Some people even go as far as to claim that it has 100 different uses. Everything from a treatment for your scalp, you can mix it with your moisturizer, you can mix it with your sunscreen. It'll make your foundation apply better if you mix it with that. Use it on your body, use it on your nails. The list goes on and on and on. And I am not surprised in the least that your family member recommended that to you as part of your hair care treatments. And in my opinion, people typically recommend the Rejuvenique oil the most because it's one of the most expensive products that Monate sells and it gives the reps the most PV points. When you're in the business opportunity, you need a certain number of points every single month in order to qualify for ranks, to qualify for paychecks if you want to rank up, if you want to earn certain trips and incentives. And when you're able to sell a Rejuvenique oil to a customer, that gives you a lot of PV points and a lot of commission because it's so expensive. If you're a VIP customer, which it sounds like you are, which we'll get to later in your story, I'm sure, you're going to be paying $89 for this thing, for a one ounce bottle of hair oil. So like I said, not surprising that she was pitching you 
you these products for postpartum hair loss and you're thinking, okay, shampoo and conditioner, but then she goes ahead and says, oh, you're really gonna want the Rejuvenique oil too. So you bought it initially with your first order and now you're saying that this Flex ship just got shipped to you and they sent you a second oil and you haven't even opened the first one. To me, it sounds like you unknowingly got signed up for the VIP auto ship program. So let's continue on with your story. I asked her about it and what it was because as I said, she didn't explain any of this and didn't explain that it was a membership in any way. She then finally explained it and said that I could just push the order back a month or so if I wasn't ready for the next bottle yet. So that's what I've been doing ever since because A, I don't need it, B, I don't want it, and C, I can't afford to spend my money on it when I now have a baby boy. I have now finally Googled Monate myself and found all the information about how it's an MLM, a pyramid scheme, how the products are not high quality, how they've made people's hair fall out, all the lawsuits, and of course, your channel. I'm now livid that she sucked me into this and took advantage of me when I was late into my pregnancy. She would have known exactly what it was and all the controversy surrounding it. Everything you've described in your videos about what these Hunbots do is exactly what this family member has plastered all over her Instagram. Promoting these hair products as the absolute best on the market, saying that all other hair products are bad for you, promoting Monate as this wonderful opportunity, saying that you can get a free car, saying that you can make a fortune selling products from home, calling it her small business all of it. I'm honestly really offended that she thinks so low of me that I was just an easy target for her MLM BS. And I am equally as offended that she only started up conversations with me pretending to care about how my baby was going, only so I would be warmed up to her when she inevitably pitched to me. I wish I just said no, but again, I honestly thought I was purchasing one bottle of shampoo and conditioner online to try. Plus, I find it hard to tell people no. I really should have just read the fine print and terms and conditions on the site when she sent me all the links to make an account. But by this point, I had already given birth to my baby and really didn't have the time. And I think she used this as a tactic. Okay, pause right there. I myself currently at the time of filming, I'm three months postpartum, okay? This newborn phase, this postpartum haze as they call it, it is truly that, it is a haze. I am barely functioning from day to day. In fact, literally yesterday, my mom was sending me pictures from right after my daughter was born and I told her, I was like, mom, I don't remember even taking those pictures. Where did you get those? Why haven't I seen them? And that's kind of the perfect anecdote to explain that when you are newly postpartum, especially if it is your first baby, in my opinion, I haven't had more than one, but it is such a shock to the system when you go from having no kids to all of a sudden being a parent literally overnight, you are in survival mode. You are focused on the bare necessities, keeping yourself and your baby alive. At least that's how it's been for me. So I completely relate to what you're saying here where you're like, I didn't even really think to look at the fine print. I thought I was just buying a couple of products. I didn't know that I should be looking out for this being an MLM or a pyramid scheme or that I'd be signed up for some membership without my knowing. And this is me saying to you, girl, I get it, okay? I wouldn't have done that either. And I think it's very reasonable to assume that maybe this family member did use that as a tactic. She knows that you're newly postpartum. She probably knows your mind is all over the place. She's preying on that one specific situation of postpartum hair loss, saying that she has a solution for that. I think in combination, all of those things, totally predatory. And it makes perfect sense to me why you maybe would have missed looking into this company a little bit more. We aren't super close family members, but I still think it's absolutely gross that she did this. I'm super annoyed to find out that I have to call up Monet to cancel my account and that there may be a cancellation fee, as well as the fact that I think I might be locked into paying for two more of these flagship orders. So safe to say I've lost a lot of respect for this family member. So because you brought it up wanting to cancel your flagship and that you might have to pay a cancellation fee, this is true. There's three mandatory orders that you have to place. I believe if you've only ordered one of them, then you have to pay a $25 cancellation fee. If you've already gone through with two of the orders, then the cancellation fee is only $20. I believe the last time I checked several months ago, I believe that's what it was. But, and you didn't hear this from me, it has been reported to me from Monate customers in the past that if you do call up Monate customer service and you tell them, hey, I did not know that this was an auto ship. The person who signed me up for it did not explain that. I had no idea what I was signing up for. Historically, allegedly, they 
won't give you a hard time about it and they will waive that cancellation fee. So that might be worth a shot, but like I said, you didn't hear from me, okay? I'm now hyper aware of MLM scams and Hunbots due to this experience and your YouTube videos. I know that many people who join these companies get sucked in, but I believe a large portion of them know exactly what they're doing and they want to make money by staying home and harassing people on social media to buy these overpriced mediocre products and by recruiting slash tricking others into making them money rather than go out and get a real job. Thanks for your videos. Keep up the good work and spread the word. Thank you for saying that. I will continue to spread the word and thank you for sending in a story so that I can spread the word using your personal experience. It makes me really happy to know that when you did finally go forward onto the internet looking for information about Monate that you did find what you were looking for and that my videos or anyone's anti-MLM videos were a piece of that. That is so, so important with search engine optimization that we're including the names of these companies in the title of the video, in the thumbnail, in the tags, that people are calling out these companies by names in the comments. All of those things help these videos find the right people who are searching for that well-rounded information about these companies. It is a bummer that you found that information after the fact. Hopefully you can get yourself out of that without paying that cancellation fee. But people like you who are in your situation are exactly the target audience that these videos are for. So hearing that you found these videos when you went looking for information about Monate is so validating for me. Thank you for telling me that. Your story serves as a great example for how people in MLMs will be shady. They will be misleading. They will take actions to intentionally not give you every piece of information that you might want to know. Because let's say she was upfront and honest with you from the beginning. Do you think you would have signed up? Because what you thought you were doing is buying a couple products one time. That's what you consented to doing. And my hunch is maybe if she had told you from the beginning that what you were actually doing with signing up for an auto ship program in which you are required to spend $84 on three separate occasions, then maybe you wouldn't have said yes. And that's the moral of the story really is that people in MLMs will do what they have to do to kind of be manipulative to get what they want to make that commission, even if that means withholding certain information. So thank you for writing in your story and for being an example of that. Even though I'm sorry that happened to you by you sharing that story with us and letting me read it on this channel, we can hopefully prevent other people from finding themselves in the same situation. This story says, hi, Hannah, greetings from a fellow Husky. I think we were probably at the University of Washington around the same time, although our academic paths are quite different. Hello, go dogs. Happy to hear from another Husky. Anyway, I was suggested your videos on YouTube after watching some content on fundamentalism and cults, and I've been hooked ever since. Growing up, my mom is in Mary Kay, and I've always had a hard time understanding how a smart woman like her with a degree in economics from a top university could have gotten sucked into an MLM. I've always been fascinated by how it was intertwined with the culture around her and her personal identity. As first a yuppie, a young urban professional woman in conservative Utah in the 80s, and later as a stay-at-home mom in the Christian homeschooling community. While this isn't so much a horror story, I did want to bring up some of my personal experiences related to my mom's involvement in Mary Kay. Please keep me anonymous. When my parents were in their 20s, they moved to Salt Lake City for grad school and got involved in a tight-knit evangelical Christian church which provided them an important sense of community in a place where they were very much the religious minority. The church had just loosened up their strict policies around women's makeup in order to appeal to the younger generation, and women were excited to experiment with their personal looks and styles. As you can imagine, Mary Kay boomed there. One of the more powerful women in the church, we'll call her Lynn, recruited many people under her, including my mom, who was about 10 years younger than her. My mom actually did build a client base as she is extremely extroverted friendly, and a great saleswoman. She even hosted the infamous makeovers, feeling like it was a meaningful way to teach young women how to look professional. However, according to my dad, the best she could ever do was break even on the business, as she was continually pressured to buy more and more inventory in order to have the seasonal product lines in stock and keep her inventory fresh. Meanwhile, Lynn continued to climb the pyramid and became the stereotypical Mary Kay hun, proudly sporting the pink Cadillac. 
Fast forward 15 years, Lynn, my mom's upline, had moved to Seattle with her husband, and due to my dad's career, my parents followed a couple years later. Lynn convinced my mom to continue with Mary Kay, and my mom built a client base in her new city, largely based in her new church, which was also pretty culty, but that's a whole different story. Honestly, my memories of this are fond. My brother and I enjoyed helping her post flyers around our neighborhood for Christmas parties, which always involved chocolate chip cookies and spiced apple cider. I always had nail polish to give as gifts to friends, and sometimes she would let us play with her rainbow of eyeshadows. I had no idea at the time that her inability to make money in the business, combined with the pressure to keep supplying her loyal customers with new inventory, was putting a financial strain on my family during an already difficult financial time. I wonder to this day how much it affected my parents' relationship. In the meantime, Lynn became quite wealthy on the backs of her massive downline. When my parents left the Colty Church after my brother and I had some negative experiences, my mom's Mary Kay business fizzled out, if simply because she no longer had the time or desire to maintain it. My mom had one last customer, we will call Evelyn, that she would deliver to consistently for a couple of years after this. Evelyn herself had been an MLM rep for Us Born Books, a jewelry MLM, maybe Park Lane, and a couple others I don't recall. We bought things from her occasionally to help her out, but she was constantly strapped for cash and the financial strain eventually led to her divorce. My mom has I haven't heard from her in years now, but I still think about her and I feel sad that she was seemingly scammed over and over. I feel bad knowing that we unknowingly supported businesses that were hurting her. My family is still friends with Lynn and her family, and honestly, her family are great, if eccentric people. However, Lynn is still pushing this business opportunity on anyone who will listen. Wait a minute, okay, let's go back to the beginning. How long has it been? According to your story, Lynn has been in this company for at least 15 years, and and to this day, she's still pushing Mary Kay. People have all kinds of different experiences in MLMs, but I do feel like there's two main categories. <laughs> One of those groups of people are those who join these companies and they quit soon afterwards because they realize that it's really hard to sell the products, they're not making much money, they're spending more than they're making, yada, yada, yada. You know the way it goes. But then there's this other, much smaller group of people that seem to be career MLM huns who are in it for like a decade or longer. And it it seems to be that those types of people tend to be the ones who the scheme is working the best for, those who are at the top of the company, those who have a large downline, those who are making good money from it. Those are the people who can justify staying in it for as long as they do. And I think that this kind of thing is a great reminder that not everybody fails at MLMs. Most people do, obviously. Most people join and lose money, but every now and then there are people who stay in these companies for years upon years making it their full-time job off the backs of other people. That's the most important piece here. Sure, maybe they are successful. Maybe they do make money and drive a pink Cadillac or whatever, but they are in that position because of the efforts of others. In my opinion, if Lynn did not have a massive downline, she would not still be in Mary Kay 15 years later. My weirdest experience with her was when I had just graduated from college with a degree in biotechnology. I was extremely relieved to be done with school and was thrilled to have landed a job I loved at a local startup. When she asked how I liked it, I gushed about how wonderful it was and how good it felt to be doing a technical job that was mentally stimulating to me. She kind of gave me a side eye and I felt my face drop. Keep in mind that in the evangelical Christian community, a woman going into a biological research field is frowned upon for a number of reasons. And I often got cold reactions from people when I told them what I did. Out of the blue, Lynn says to me, well, if science doesn't work out for you, you know there's always a place for you in Mary Kay. Of course there is. There's always a place for people in pyramid schemes. They're always recruiting. <laughs> they have to be. There's always openings. I was caught off guard and I laughed awkwardly saying, thank you, but I'm very happy with my career right now. She said, just wait though until you want to have a family. You won't feel that way. Again, an awkward laugh. And I said, well, I don't know. I can't imagine not doing science. I love it. Also, I don't think I'm cut out for sales, like at all. I'm an introvert with a lot of social anxiety and the idea of having to do the hun pitch makes me feel actually sick. Taking a different tact, she said, well, you know that Mary Kay corporate office employs a lot of chemists. Maybe you'd like to go work in one of their labs. They are such a great company to work for. They are really values driven. I'm sorry, values driven? <laughs> 
Is that a thing? Does that apply to MLM companies? Because I don't feel like it can. You value what? Suckering people into a pyramid scheme? You value a business model in which most people lose money? You value victimizing and preying on people? Okay, uh uh-huh, sounds good. Not knowing what to say, I made an excuse to leave the conversation as politely as I could. By this time, I knew what an MLM was and I wanted no part of it. Despite this, I was still hurt by the implication that my career choices were somehow invalid or short-sighted. Here I was, I thought, working for a company making life-saving drugs, and this woman thought I'd be better off selling or creating cheap makeup. Now, I realize it likely wasn't so personal. She's been conditioned over 40 years in Mary Kay. (laughs) Okay, (laughs) what? (laughs) Earlier in your story, you mentioned a 15-year period of time, so that's what I was going with, and now you're saying that she's been in it for 40 years. 40 years, four decades. (laughs) Oh my God. Can you imagine something more miserable? She's been conditioned for over 40 years in Mary Kay to pitch the business opportunity in any situation. Judging by her pink SUV, it has worked for her. And seriously, great point here. You're working for a company making life-saving drugs and she's kind of implying that that's not valuable work, but selling Mary Kay makeup is. That's delusional. No matter what way you dice it, you cannot convince me that's not delusional. 20 years after my mom bought her last Mary Kay products, she still has a closet full of makeup that has long expired, but somehow still survived multiple moves. When I went to college, I picked out a few things to take with me, but unfortunately found that all but the eyeshadow irritated my skin and caused me to break out. Neither of my parents will talk much about Mary Kay, so I will likely never know how much money was spent and whether it was made back. I have to think that my mom's desire to contribute to the family income in a time and place where wives and mothers were expected to stay home and raise children put her in a situation that allowed her to be sucked in. There were definitely contradictory expectations put on her by society. The girl boss idea that a well-educated professional woman should lean into the hustle culture and make her own way, but also the deeply ingrained belief that a woman's number one duty is to her husband and her family. I honestly don't know how anyone could balance that. And I imagine the promises of an MLM exploited the desire to be and do everything. Thank you for your important work and hug your kitties for me. P.S. Go dogs. How eloquent is that last sentence? You bring up such an important point that it really is a dichotomy of like wanting to be a hardworking girl boss, but also be that wife and mother who stays home. Not every woman wants to be both of those things, but some of them do. And how perfect is an MLM to kind of reconcile both of those? I don't think I've ever articulated that point as concisely and eloquently as you did in that one sentence. (laughs) So thank you for that. That's amazing. And I think one of the largest points from your story is that typically the people that do the best in MLMs are the ones that got in a long time ago or right at the beginning and that the big bucks and the pink Cadillacs, those are reserved for the people who have dedicated decades of their life to this and who have built a massive downline big enough to support those things. This is not saying that if you're in an MLM for 40 years that you're going to have these things, but just generally, if we look at the people who are doing the best in MLM schemes, they are the ones who have been in it for a long time or at least the ones that have the most people in their downline. The level you can reach in an MLM company is not directly correlated to time spent in the company, but it is correlated directly to how many people you can recruit. And if you're in it for 40 years, I can only imagine that you've had a lot of opportunity to recruit a crap ton of people. And man, I'm sorry that your mom got sucked into that, but her experience is a reflection of the experiences of most people who join MLMs, which is they join, they lose money, they have to quit. They realize it's not sustainable and that it kind of operates like a scam and they're never really going to make it to those levels that they were promised. Thank you for writing in this story, beautifully written and go dogs. And with that, my friends, that's all the stories I have for you for this MLM horror stories video. Incredible stories today. I am so happy with the way this video turned out. I hope you enjoyed these stories. And if you have your own that you think would be a great fit for these videos, again, do not hesitate to send it my way. I can never, ever, ever have too many. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate you and I'll see you in my next one real soon. Thank you.